Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing? I am not going to complain. Uh, we are in mid-season form now, Kyle. Maybe Ohio State's offensive line is not in mid-season form, but we are. So let's not screw around. Let's get right into this. Um, do you want to start? Do you want to go right into the grading? Uh, do you want to do opening thoughts? Do you want to talk about Ryan Day press conference? Um, how do you want to? How do you want to handle? Uh, honestly, honestly, Jerry, let's let's do first impressions here. I'd, I'd rather just let's start with our first thoughts here. What we thought of the game, some takeaways, the goods, the bads. Hear from what Ryan Day has to say, and we will we'll end it like we typically do with our greetings and answer some questions. So let's let's jump right into it. 23 to 3, Jared. Uh the good. Hey, you 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 only let up three points. You only let up three points. Yep. You let only let up 153 yards. I know I know a lot of people are going to look, ooh, 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 but Kyle, Kyle and Jared, it's 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 Indiana. Yeah. You, you know, if, you know, there's previous there, there's hold previous on. years if your, time, where, if your response to this is it was only Indiana, where have you been the past three years? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's these these type of games in previous years, Ohio State led up three hundred plus yardage on on defense here. 153 yards. And really Indiana had like one good drive, and that was a forty 45 yard drive where they got the three points. I was very, very pleased with the defense here. That's the good, the bad. Yeah. Eh, okay. Yeah. They only put up 23 points. You still have state putting up thirties, forties, fifties against Indiana here. So yeah, it's a lot of, and that's been the main focus these past few days here is, is Ohio state's offense. Oh, what, What's going on here? They only they only put up 380 yards on offense here, uh, like just griping and complaining. And, and to a degree, yep, you're 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 right to go ahead and complain about how the offense looked. And a lot of times they just looked all out of place. Offensive line looked crap, at, especially in the beginning of the game here. Um, Kyle McCord looked. Uh, like a young quarterback, yeah. like his first game here. I'll, I'll say which, this: which, 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 which we're Kyle not McCord, typical, which we're not typical of seeing, though, because we're, we're typical seen of it seeing. In a years. Yeah, we haven't seen it, and yeah, with C.J. Stroud and Fields, heck, even Haskins, their right. first games have been really good. Eh. Uh, Stroud. If you just look at the statistics, it looks like Stroud had a really good first game at Ohio State. He had four touchdowns and a bunch of yards, but his completion percentage sucked. Um, All right. Really, I'm going to ask Ohio State fans to take a good, honest look inside their memories. A large contingency of Ohio State fans wanted CJ Stroud benched after his first four or five games at Ohio State a very large contingency of Ohio state fans wanted nothing to do with CJ Stroud after his first month of Ohio state quarterbacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is, which is, yeah. After one start and I'm not counting Akron as backup duty, sharing starts with Jack Miller two years ago. So yes, I will be calling this Kyle McCord's first start. Yes. I know that's technically not correct. Shut up. (laughs) <laughs> I, I don't care. This was this was Colin McCord's first real start. Um, I will and I will be referring to it as such from here on out. In his first real start, he looked better. I don't care what the statistics say. He looked better than C.J. Stroud did in C.J. Stroud's first start. Now, he should C.J. Stroud was in his second year in the program. This is Kyle McCord's third year in the program. We should, we should see a little bit better. It should be a little bit better. So just, we should see a more polished quarterback, which I think we saw. I think um, CJ Stroud, if God, I'm really asking you guys, remember 
it's it, like his entire first year, he'd come out into the start of games and start sailing balls over people's heads out of nerves. Who remembers that? He'd get nervous. He'd sail the ball straight over people's heads. Uh, true. Stroud was uh, off in his first three games. Of course, his shoulder was an issue. What he super valid point. Uh, his, his shoulder was an issue. Um, but I also think, and I, and I think I've seen this like through the preseason with CJ Stroud in Houston so far too. I think he's a guy who needs confidence. I think CJ Stroud, um, again, in his first year, his second year at Ohio state, he was fine. First year at Ohio state. Again, the first drive or so, if he didn't hit his passes right away, he'd get nervous and start sailing the ball. That's what young quarterbacks do. That's what inexperienced quarterbacks do. And I think Kyle McCord, we saw some young, inexperienced quarterback things to do. We saw him locking into his targets, deciding before the snap who he was going to throw the ball to and throwing it there. That's what young quarterbacks do. We saw him straight up. He, he, had, he had a running touchdown in the bag. And he decided to juke and not follow his blocker instead of simply following his blocker. And he, and that's in one of the cases, Ohio state loses a touchdown and gets a field goal instead. And by the way, in his defense, he should have a touchdown on this board that he doesn't have. Yeah. Marvin Harrison jr. Who is now a veteran on this team, who is now a leader on this team doesn't fight enough, takes three steps out of bounds and then catches a perfectly delivered ball for a touchdown. Not, that's not Kyle McCord's fault. It's just Marvin Harrison needs to be better there. Marvin Harrison is better. Uh, he, uh, you know, it's his first game back too. you know, it's everyone's it's, first game it's, back. It's, it's some a, first game jitters. It's a brain fart. It's a brain, a, brain, fart. a brain fart. There. He's still a young kid. Like we, you know, we call him established veteran, but you know, he's still third year out of high school. He has to be better. He has to do better for his teammate. That was a perfectly delivered uh, touchdown pass from McCord to Harrison and Harrison stepped out of bounds. It happens. Yeah. It doesn't change the fact that the pass was perfect. Yeah. And honestly, who, who needs to be better was the offensive line. Offensive line, especially yeah. early on was just crap. I'll just, Kyle, I'll just, should we get into the grading? I think I feel like we've started getting into the grading. Should we just do the grades? <laughs> well, we're, we're just giving our initial thoughts okay, of okay, the okay, okay, of okay. the team here, and then we'll we'll get into that. But I mean, you weren't doing any, your your new quarterback any favor of no. having to get rid of the ball sooner than you would like to. Had to do a lot of checkdowns, like a lot of checkdowns, and we'll get. <laughs> At, there, at there, there's, point, defi- there's, defi- there's definitely some plays, and I know you're, you've probably already seen it already. A lot of people pointing out of, of that McCord should have just let it rip because they had, you had um, Marvin Harrison Jr. streaking down, and you throw it there, and maybe he might be able to make a, a great play there. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll come with time. But when you, when he was so used to having to get rid of the boss, so. Yeah. so much quicker than he used to especially early on yeah it's hard to keep it's hard to to think that way because you're so used to getting rid of the ball a lot quicker too so the offensive line didn't do him any justice uh, especially early, no. on, early on to build that confidence no offensive line performance was bad especially in the first half and that's not to say it was like miraculously better in the second half because it wasn't um, if anything, you know, Indiana probably just got a little more tired in the second half. Um, yeah. it's not so far. And like, we have one, we have one, well, two, excuse me. We have two returning players on the offensive line, brand new center, brand new tackles, offensive line. And by the when we know we were t- uh, talent deficient, especially at tackle. We already knew this. This is why Coach Dodd got canned. Excuse me, retired. Because he because he retired. Um, this is why Coach Dodd was retired. Um, 
we knew that there is a talent deficiency, a recruiting deficiency issue, especially at offensive tackle. That's why you went and got Josh Simmons. Josh Simmons at left tackle in his first game was bad. Like I'll just, I, and I very rarely will just come out and say an individual player was bad, but he was bad. Um, I, and I'm willing to say that because I think a lot of his mistakes were mental and not physical. And I think that will, I hope that will come with time. He, you know, he, this is his first big 10 game. Yeah. He was a freshman, all American at right tackle at San Diego state. Guess what? You're in the big 10 now. Uh, and now you're playing left tackle, not right tackle. These are adjustments. He needs time to adjust. Um, against Indiana, you, there's a little bit of grace because it's not Notre Dame, because it's not Wisconsin, it's not Iowa, um, it's not Michigan. But he's also gets to he he gets to run the MAC and FCS circuit here for a few weeks, um, a couple that weeks. Confidence. So, you know, a little more grace. A little more patience. Uh, pass protection was pretty good against a decent front seven from Indiana. Um, I disagree. Um, and and I, I, I don't think it was pretty good. I, I think that McCord was forced to get rid of the ball quickly on several occasions. And while I do like Indiana's linebackers and I do like Indiana's interior defensive tackles, or their interior defensive line, quote, or comma, their defensive tackles. Um, there, there's not a pass rusher on that team that that scares me. Um, no. And, what, and what's really more disappointing, Jared, here, you look at you look at one, one stat here under the offense efficiency stat here, third down, two for 12 on third downs. And heck, heck, let's let's even break that down even further. Of those um, third downs, I believe seven of them, seven of them were on third and five and shorter, and yeah. they only converted one of those. I believe it was. Yeah, you only it, converted one of those. And even and if you listen to um, Ryan Day here at halftime, what was the one thing that he mentioned? He's trying to establish. Short he's trying to. He's trying to uh, establish the run, and that his, and that the team needs to convert those third downs on those third and shorts. There, he, what he, he says one for seven on third mm -hmm. and four or less. That's that's yeah. Great. That's the stat. It, it, he's he's trying to learn from his yeah. mistakes from the past two years here, and that's uh, got to get back to running the ball and running it well and being able to convert those third downs, third and shorts. And Ohio State failed; they failed in yeah. this game. And I hope a, that a the offensive line will learn from this, and I hope they get better because well, they have to. You, we we've discussed about this in our preseason talk here. There's a lot of the Big Ten teams here, especially the top ones here, have really good running backs, and they're going to make you pay if you can't run the ball well. A thing I kept repeating in the Discord server during the game as people started to get antsy, as people started to get upset. The Indiana game is about more than in Indiana. If Ohio State, if Ryan Day wanted to, they could have gone out and went 56 to 6 against Indiana. I believe that. I believe that had the defense not played this well and Indiana had gotten a few touchdowns, Ohio State would have scored more points in return. Ryan believe, Day yes. is decided in this game that he's going to make his team learn to run the ball. And because it's Indiana, he has the space to do that. If stuff had gotten bad, if things had gotten desperate, he would have, he could have brought out more of his playbook. And by the way, Ohio State was not running any more than a tiny fraction of their playbook against Indiana. They're not, they're not going to show off the playbook at any time before Notre Dame. So just get that in your head right now. 
these three games are not about winning with spectacular numbers. You're not going to win the national championship by putting up pretty stats against Indiana in week one. So if that's what you wanted to see, and if you're disappointed you didn't see it, get over it. I, I don't know what else to say other than that. Like, uh, and like they'll put up a bunch of numbers against Youngstown State just because of athletes, just because they're so out athletic. They'll put up a lot of numbers against Youngstown State because the athleticism just isn't even on par. Yep. Uh, and then they'll put up decent numbers against the MAC team. Um, that's not a concern either. But again, you need to think of this game and the next two games as preseason games. You don't judge how good an NFL team is going to be by their preseason games because we all know it doesn't actually matter. The only difference between that and this is that Ohio State just has to win at the end. In a preseason game, you don't have to win at the end, but it's about development. It's about seeing what you have. And that's what this Indiana game was. And that's what the next two weeks are going to be. If you, if you really, really wanted to see a 56 to six blowout. And if you think that's more important than developing this team, then you can go back and watch the last two seasons where the offense was just throwing the ball all over the yard, giving up on the run right away. But you saw where that led you at the end of the season. Yep. Yep. This Saturday, this past Saturday, and the next two Saturdays are about and for much more than the individual games that they are made out of. All right, let's let's go and move on to um just some I'll just pick some things that uh, Ryan Day said post game here, Jared, and give me a, a brief comment or two after these here, Jared. So after the game here, uh, some reporters talked to talked to Ryan Day, gave him some questions here. Um, when asked about the offense, he said the offense was a mixed bag. Uh, have to play have to play better situational football, and says, "quote We need to run." the football that that's what you saw in this game. That is just straight up what you saw in this football game. Ryan day was going to grind this game out with the run period. He was Step going to, to live or die running the ball. The team's yeah, going to, go to learn to run the ball, whether they or we like it or not. Mm -hmm. To go along with that. He said the game seems to have gone fast. Uh, they went to a committee of rushers today. They had a good balance between passing and running, which they had 31 plays, uh, running plays to 36 passing plays in this game. Uh, he also says, it's okay for me to be excited about a great defense. It's a, it's a different looking defense. Uh, the defensive line was disruptive. And we, and we saw that. Yeah, it, we, we saw that. I mean, no, the, they only, they we're, only we're let up 153 yards. Offense. We're talking a lot about the offense because I think that's what people are upset about. Um, the defense, I thought, was spectacular. And again, if your response to that is, well, it's Indiana. Sure. The, their quarterbacks aren't very good. Not, nothing about their offense is all that great. Um, again, the only strengths in the Indiana team are their linebackers and their defensive tackles. The reality of the situation is that we've seen Ohio state's defense struggle against lesser offenses in recent years. So, yeah. And if you, and if you can't just use your football brain, if you can't just use your eyes to see how much more competent this defense is, then I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Mm. Uh, so related to how for the offense look, he said he anticipated some of that to happen offensively, wanted to do better, didn't convert as well as he thought they would. Uh, he says, quote, we expect when we're on third and two to convert about 80% of the time. And right. we saw here one for seven no. on, on third and four or less. Yeah, the offensive line has to be better, period. Mm. And that's not just the tackles and that's not just Hinsman. That's everyone. 
the offensive line needs to be better as a yep. unit, as individuals. Uh, they're not getting it done through one week. The offensive line needs to be better. Yeah, we saw uh, we saw three different running backs getting the ball quite a bit here. Uh, uh, Trainum had eight carries. Henderson had twelve. Uh, Mike Williams had seven. Uh, so there was a lot of questions about should should Trainum get more carries because of how well he did, but. But Ryan Day said that Henderson's still the starter. Mine Williams yeah. is right there. It was hot today, especially in the first half. So they rotated three guys quite a bit. And that makes sense to me. Yep. Uh, the other one about Kyle McCord's interception, he says uh, it was on fourth down. Not going to blame him for that because that play got blown up. Yeah, the the play, uh, I believe it was Trainum. He was supposed to get the ball in the flat Indiana. I believe it was one of their linebackers made a great yeah, play. linebackers just blew him up. Yeah. They saw it coming. They knocked him off his feet. Uh, he had no one else to go to. What do you want him to do? Run the ball out of bounds on fourth down. It was fourth down. Give one of your guys a yeah. shot. Screw it. Uh, hey, if so you're going regarding- to throw your first interception as a college football quarterback, throw it on fourth down. <laughs> that's, that's a really good time to throw your first <laughs> interception. Uh, regarding to Devin not playing Devin Brown as much, he says that was my gut, and I went with it. Uh, All right. he, he also he also said that um, um, yeah, he just he felt like that um, he need, he needed to get the offense into a rhythm here. Uh, he was slated to go in on different drives here, but the offense just was not clicking. You need to get the offense clicking. You didn't want to disrupt it by flipping quarterbacks. I get it. Um, Mm -hmm. So that the last one here, I thought was really interesting and a lot of talk. Here we are after week zero and week one, about the whole uh, running clock here. Uh, Ryan Day out here saying it felt like him and Brian Hartline were on the sideline talking a lot because there were a lot of dead balls, a lot of timeouts and surprise, Jared. A lot of commercials. Mm, don't get me started. Oh, I, I wanted to. That's why. That's why I read. We that. we don't we don't <laughs> have we don't have time, Kyle. Uh, we by the way, go if you're if you want to hear me rant about this. Um, we did an episode during the summer. Um, was it something about unpopular opinions or? I forget the name of it, Kyle. Um, but I basically went on a thing where I said they should just put ads on the jerseys. Um, so if you Might go find well. the thumbnail that that has Marvin Harrison on the thumbnail with uh, corporate ads on the on the jerseys, and you want to hear me rant about how this is all BS and meant to put um, more ads in the game, go go listen to that episode. Mm-hmm. Um, Hold on. I, I, I need to find this. I need to find this. Uh, Tom Fernelli had an amazing tweet or whatever the hell it's called. Um, Fox went to commercial seven times during the second quarter or once every two minutes and nine seconds of game time. Good thing they changed the clock rules to shorten the game. That's my opinion on it. And yep. I, I don't want to go. I don't want to get started or go too far past that. All right. All right. Let's let's go and jump into the grade. So we're going to go ahead and grade uh, all the different all the different groups here from the coaching to all the positions to the offense and defensive coaching, all of the different positions here. So we won't waste any more time here, Jared. And um, let's go and start with the. Offensive coaching. Let's start with the offensive coaching staff. How would you grade them, Jared? Um, are we doing individual coaching staffs as well? Yeah, yeah. We're doing okay. the individual coaching staff, so offensive side, defensive side, and then coaching as a whole. Defensive coaching, A+. Plus. Um, offensive coaching, this is going to be controversial. I give him an A. Coaching. Mm. I, I, 
in this game was about more than Indiana. There is a long term but... plan in place. If you you if you don't see that long term plan, if you're not willing to see that long term plan, then you're gonna say, "Wow, Jared, you're gonna give the offensive coaching an A." Yeah, I am. Because I see the long term plan, I understand the long term plan, and I like the long term plan. This game was about more than Indiana. As a whole, here I'm. I, I I just don't see. I know. I know you. You have. You have a different thought about it, but I. I'm getting a D plus. Like it's just. We we expected a lot more. I mean, heck, look look at Jared. Look at our, our, predictions in our in our previous episodes here, where we expected Ohio State to cover here, and they weren't even they. They didn't even cover here. They didn't even get the. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it just was not I, up to par what we wanted to see from the coaching staff. So I got I'm, the offensive coaching staff. I give them a D plus. Like it's just no, not well, what about not coaching? Any clo- not anywhere close they should be. What about coaching overall? Coaching overall, I gave them a C. I gave them a C overall. All right. Uh, All right. Kyle McCord, or I guess the quarterbacks in general. I I think he was average. I average. So that that to me that's a C. That's a C for me for average. Uh, I, here here's the thing I want to remind you, Kyle. Remember we we grade these based off of expectations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. If and CJ I'm Stroud had if CJ Stroud had had the game that Kyle McCord had, we'd give him a D, and it would be justified. Kyle McCord in his first start as an Ohio State Buckeye, I thought looked very competent. Did he blow me away? No. Did he do as well as I kind of expected him to do based on the fact that it was his first start as an Ohio State quarterback? Yes. I think he gets a B in my book. Mm. Well, we'll we'll disagree. We'll disagree there, Jared. But I, I give him a C, just average. Now, I, I, the, uh, run, the running, I mean, you, the running, you got a grade based off of. I, I I'm grading the expectations, and I had higher expectations. So, suppose that. All right, running backs, Jared. I thought the running back, bleh, the running backs did pretty well. I give him a, I give him a solid B. What, uh, by the way, when they, he agrees with me, he says McCord gets yeah. a B. Uh, I thought when the running backs had their opportunity they they made some uh great movements um they made some great plays when they weren't getting hit in the backfield so i think overall the running backs did did really well a solid b and train them definitely caught a lot of eyes here so um, it's no longer a two two um headed monster here we got we got a we got a three-headed monster in um in our running back core here at least um, and by the way, mm-hmm. like what's Travion needs a new nickname because we have chip and chop <laughs> chip, chop and cut. I, that doesn't work. We, we need, <laughs> we need a CH based nickname for, for, uh, Henderson. Cause we got a chip and a chop. We, we, we need a Trey chip chop. Trey chip chop. Trey chip uh, chop. Trey chip. We, we'll, work, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. <laughs> A minus. I thought the running backs looked great. Um, the problems they the running backs would have had great stats if the offensive line was playing where they should be playing. Running backs definitely B to B plus. All right, Woody's taking your side on that one, Kyle. All right, all right. Offensive line, Jared. <clears throat> <laughs> right <laughs> um i know we're supposed to be i i am seriously fighting giving them an f um but we, we need to be grading them based off of expectation three new starters uh we we knew there was a talent issue at the tackle position we there needs to be a, we need to be giving them a little bit of time and a little bit of grace 
Um, that being said, they were like the worst unit on the field for Ohio State, period. Um, I'm going to give them a D only because... I'm I'm trying to grade based off of expectations and our expectations really shouldn't have been that high going in. That's the only thing that is preventing me from giving them an F. Yep. Yep. All right. I'm going to move a little quicker here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm giving them a D. I'm giving them a D as well. Uh, expectations here. They've. There was five tackles for loss. On, on this game here against an Indiana team that w- in what we said in our preview show, we were not afraid of this Indiana defense and how State should be able to do what they want offensively. And they did not. To, to be fair, I did say that Indiana had good defensive tackles and I particularly pointed out uh, as their player to watch was their linebacker that was responsible for many of those TFLs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Yes, Aaron Casey, which I mentioned in last year, was my player to watch. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. yes, I mean, Aaron Casey had himself a, another great game, too. Yeah, that's that's fair. But this offensive line should have been able to do a lot more than yeah. what we No, 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 no I agree. I'm just up. I'm defend. I'm defending us in that, Kyle. <laughs> like, I feel like okay. we we told people that the defensive tackles and the linebackers for Indiana were pretty good. Mm-hmm. Tight ends here. I thought I'm giving Stover. Him a, oh, sorry, you had. I'm giving him an A. Stover had himself a career game, led the team in uh, receiving yards with 98 yards, five catches. All he was missing is that is that touchdown to get that A plus for his uh, for his crew here. So I'm giving him a solid A here. Tight ends played very well. Uh, there's been a couple of plays where the might have been Stover. Uh, in run block is did really well here. So I was very, very pleased what I saw from the tight ends. I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to give him an a plus um, because not only did suddenly realizing that this font doesn't have an appropriate plus sign that looks terrible. I'll fix it next week. Uh, <laughs> G Scott, by the way, also looked really good. Like as a blocker, he mm-hmm. caught my eye several times in run oh, blocking. Yeah. Um, a couple chips on pass blocking as well. Uh, was playing fullback a couple times. Uh, I thought G Scott. I think the the G Scott Junior transformation into tight end is complete and ready, and he looked really good. Yes. All right, the wide receivers. <sighs> Hear me out. I'm giving the wide receivers a C. I'm giving them a C in this game and a lot of it because when Kyle McCord had time, especially later in the game in the second half, he still had issues trying to find the wide receivers open, which kind of leads me to look at that the receivers aren't getting open enough for Kyle McCord to make those passes. Now, uh, Julian Fleming had himself a great game. He had six receptions in this game. Emeka had three. Harrison had two, but if, if you watch that game, they they were really keeping an eye on uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. and really preventing him from having a uh, having a career game against Indiana. So I I give wide, the wide receivers a C though this game. I like them to get open a little bit more to get to to help Kyle McCord out a little bit better. Yeah, they're supposed to be the best unit maybe in all of college football. Um and even though I don't blame them for a lot of what went wrong in this game, um I, I think a lot of the blame lays on the offensive line not giving Kyle McCord time, Kyle McCord being a first game quarterback. Um the fact of the matter is, is that Emeka wasn't around. Um, Fleming had a good game. I'm going to give him, I'm going to throw a plus on there. I'm going to throw a okay. plus on there, but the plus, I want everyone to know that the plus is just for Julian Fleming. No one else gets it. That's, that is Julian Fleming's plus. I'll just leave this and we'll move on to the defensive here. 
your 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 trio starting receivers only had 11 catches. All right, uh, defensive line here. All right, I guess we're going to combine defensive lines. So I had defensive ends in A minus and the defensive tackles in A plus. So I will give the defensive line an A. I agree with literally everything you said. So if you want to move quickly, I think we'll just leave it at that. I, I think you're... <laughs> I think your summation was pretty perfect. Mm -hmm. They were disruptive. Um, they got pass rushes most of the time. I didn't see a ton of Dude. linebacker blitzing for pass yeah. rush purposes. Uh, I, I know it did happen, but you didn't see a ton of it. Uh, they were getting. They were being so... disruptive. And, and by the way, Indiana brought the triple option surprising mm -hmm. everyone and the team adjusted to it fairly well. I mean, they, they adjusted to it like for for not preparing for it um which you kind of have to prepare for for i thought they played well i thought they played really well uh yeah, I was, what he says really... wideouts didn't really get separation but how much of mm -hmm. that was just running vanilla routes and schemes that's of woody another fantastic it's, it's point, point on your yeah, part good point ohio state was running their junior varsity playbook in this game and will be for the next two games they're just not going to show notre dame anything it's, so going back to the defense here, man, I was so impressed watching some of these young Buckeyes really step up in their first game here. We got to see we got to see Hero Kanyu um, really um, stepping up in this game. There, there was a couple of plays when I was like, man, like ninety three making some really big plays here, or being very disruptive right in the middle of that uh, defensive line. Ty Hamilton was a uh, very disruptive as well, and. My boy Tyleek Williams had himself a great game as well, too. I was very, very pleased with the defensive line in this game. Very pleased. They might they I might agree. not have gotten the that may not have gotten the sacks that you're wanting to see here, but I'm not worried about but again, stats. But again, with it being the triple option here, yeah, I was very, very pleased with the defensive line. Linebackers, I'd also give an A. Also give an A. Steel Chambers, great game. Uh Tommy Eichenberg great game as well cody simon had himself a, a good game as well i was very pleased again with the linebackers they didn't they made good open field tackles they didn't yeah they they didn't they didn't embarrass themselves so i'll just say that they didn't they didn't put themselves in bad By positions the way, they, not embarrassing yourself when you're unexpectedly thrown a triple option defense is saying something yeah and the corners, I, I give the same thing. I give the corners an A here. Uh, Sony Styles. I know we. I know a lot of people would really talk We're about classifying Sonny's. him as a safety or a line. It's, well, he's uh, that in betweener guy, but he's not. I don't okay. think we can call him a corner. Um. Yeah, uh, Jordan Hancock played very well as well here, and even even the transfer, uh, Davison uh, Igbenusen, played really well as well too. I was. Yeah, I was I was very pleased with the corners. I'd give them an A as well, and and you might as well I'm add go, another A for the another uh, A for on. the safeties as well. I'm going A plus on the corners. Um, Indiana completed two passes in the first half of the game. Two. Okay. Two passes. Um, Jordan Hancock has taken a step in this. I've never seen Jordan Hancock look so confident before as I've seen Jordan Hancock look in this game. Burke has his swagger back. Igbenosa already looks like he belongs in this defense. I feel great about the corners. I feel absolutely great about the corners. And it does need to be said that Indiana doesn't have a good quarterback or, or anyone scary in the wide receiving core. That needs to be said, but again, if we're, as I said at the beginning of the show, we, we can't be playing the yeah, but Indiana card based off of what we've seen the, the defense look like against bad teams over the past three years. Yeah. Yeah. You, you stated, you stated about two, two completions through the first half. Heck I'll, I'll go a little bit further. There's only four passes completed through three quarters then and under 40 yards yeah. through three quarters. Yeah, and and add an A for me as well for the the safeties as well. Not a, not letting anything deep. 
Uh, I, I don't even know what their longest uh, reception was here. They're, um, well, they, they did have one that was over 20 yards, but that, that, that was in the fourth quarter. But yeah, they did, they did very, very well. I was really pleased with uh, with what I saw. Did y'all see Kenyatta Jackson fly by Tommy in pursuit on a scramble? Dude can fly. Very excited about Kenyatta Jackson. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very excited about a lot of the young guys on defense. Um, we also saw, I would say, um, a ton of um, Caden Curry in this game as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think between Kenyatta Jackson and Caden Curry, the future at defensive end for Ohio State uh, still looks very, very bright. Absolutely. There might yes. be some depth issue because of some recruiting issues the past couple of years. But for right now, uh, it, it still looks excellent mm -hmm. for Ohio State. Right. And, the, and the last one here, uh, special teams. I think special teams, I would give a I would give a B as a role as a, overall mainly just because of the kickoff return coverage. But yes, yes, I know that Indiana has as a, a negative, a, you mean? Yeah, as a negative. Yeah. yeah. I know Indiana has it had a really good um returner and uh, Jalen Lucas. Uh he looked he looked like he's ready to break one at at any moment here and definitely showed some some vulnerabilities on Ohio State's uh, kick return. Uh, coverage there so that's leaving me a little bit concerned but other than that high state Bennett did well in special teams so i'd say a b yeah uh, uh yes uh what he says proctor had a game yeah i think proctor um i think he took like one bad angle early in the game against an option but again they weren't prepared for the option so i thought they did well in covering it mm -hmm. um so i th yeah proctor flashed at times um i I really don't know. Kyle, say something negative about the defense. Uh, not enough uh, sacks. It feels, <laughs> it feels like a statistic. I mean, sh okay, sure. Not enough sacks. Okay. I just, okay. I don't, here, here's a negative. Here's a negative. They, they, they let up the defense let up five out of 15 third downs. That's how. Mm, I mean, 33 is still good. It is. I, it is. I'm just nitpicking here, but either way, got to move on to some Buckeye leaves here, Jared. We're going to give a Buckeye leave for three players here, offense, defense, and a wild card here. So I'll, I'll start with the offense, Jared. I'm going to go with, as we typically do at the start of every year for the past five, six years, Jared, I'm going to go with the tight end here. I'm going to go with Cade Stover as my offensive player. He gets my Buckeye leave. Uh, I, I, I don't disagree with that. Um, I'm going to go with Trey Henderson. The stats I don't show how excited I am to see him running the ball again. He looked like old Henderson. Um, we need yep. the offensive line to play better. Um, but yeah. I thought he Pretty looked like himself again. Yeah. What do you say? What do you say, Woody? Who do you who do you have for your uh He um, says uh Chip Chambers and the kicker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Defense here. So he has Chambers. I mentioned him already. I'm I was very impressed what I saw. Defensive side, uh Tyleek Williams. I picked for my um look I leave for the defensive side. Dude was all over, plugging holes there. Very, very excited for Tyreek Williams. I also was also hesitant to maybe put in there um, uh, Caden Curry as well, or even um, Hiro Kanyu as well, but I'll, I'll stick with uh, Tyreek Williams. I'm going to go with Denzel Burke. Um, they threw at Burke a couple times in the first quarter, then never threw any. Then we just never saw Denzel Burke again for the rest of the game which is exactly what you want out of a cornerback. I just don't yes. want to know. I, I want to forget that you played. Yes. All right. And Woody picked Chambers and Woody picked uh, uh, Jaden Fielding, the kicker for Ohio State as his wild card. Fielding just looks smooth, right? 
Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I want to talk about Fielding for a second. Fielding just looks smooth. Like, he just looks confident and smooth, and he he's just so casual about it. Like, I, I don't know. Something about, you know, they always talk about quarterbacks having, like, a, an air of, of confidence or of calm, cool collection. As a kicker, he just felt like he goes out there, he kicks, he says, all right, I made that kick, and then he goes back to the side. Like, there's something very cool and nonchalant about Fielding. Yeah, yeah. So my wild card here, I'm going to go back on the offensive side, surprisingly. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, uh, Trainum. I'm going to go with Trainum as my wild card. Uh, I thought when he came in, very explosive, very exciting to see when he came in to give uh, Henderson some relief. Not to say that Henderson, um, I mean, Henderson, you look at the stat wise, didn't really show exactly how well he played, though, but Trainum came in and had some really exciting runs. I'm very excited to see more of him as the season uh, goes along. Yeah. Um, for my wild card, I'm going to go. You know, I almost don't want to say it just because you already said it. Um, or actually, no, you didn't. I'm going to go with JT. Um, I, I thought JT looked, uh, disruptive and impressive. Um, I, I, I like JT. I think JT is going to have a big year this year. Agreed. I uh, agreed. All right. Um, just a couple of questions here. Cause we are running a little long here, Jared. So I'm going to pick some that are probably the biggest, uh, questions here. Uh, so chop daddy asked, did train him solidify him as running back one after this game? No. Yeah, I agree. I don't I don't think so. He had himself a great game, but when you saw Henderson and the way he runs there, a healthy Henderson that we saw will still be your running back one. Uh Buckeye Esquire, can McCord be Stenson Bennett plus? And is that all this team needs? Is that all this team needs? Yes. Uh he he's better than Stenson Bennett, though. Uh, I don't even feel like I need to justify that statement. Quite frankly. Oh, wow, oh, I'm the... late. Matt, Matt, we're doing another episode right after this one. Yep, you're good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Evan Pryor says, Evan Pryor Stan in our Discord says, I'm going to choose to focus on the positive. So who played better, Burke or Trainum? Um, I think I'm going to go with Burke just because of what Jared mentioned before. And you didn't hear anything from him. And that's exactly what you want as yeah. a corner. Yeah. Uh, again, they, they threw at him a couple times in the first quarter, then never again. Yeah. All right, and I will pick one from uh, Z spikes here. He says here. Um, I feel like teams know exactly when we have to call a running play and are selling out, crashing all the rushing lanes, knowing we are not passing. I don't know if that's really a question, just more of a statement. But yeah, there, there, there are definitely times when you, you could tell Ohio State was going to run and Indiana knew and they just crashed. I mean, but the, the, the pass, the, the, the one interception that McCord throws, right? That was them countering that. It's just that the, they have good line. Indiana, again, for all of their lack of talent, does have good linebackers. They recognize what was happening and they knocked Chambers down and they disrupted the play, you know, and they were running counter. Like we, we saw Ohio State more run counters in this game. So like, yeah, OK, you know, we're going to run. But guess what? Now we're going to run to the you know, we're going to run a counter. We're going to pull some guards. Um it doesn't matter if they know you're going to, especially if you're playing Indiana on third and two, I don't care if they know you're running or not. If the offensive line is up to snuff and if you got tight ends on the field, I don't care if they know you're running. Yep. Straight up. Don't care. Yep. All right, Jared. I think that's it. I think that's all the time we have for uh, today. Nothing in Kyle's corner here. So we'll just go and kick it off to you. Oh, okay. Just going to, all right. Well, yeah, fine, 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 Kyle. Just just throw it all onto me. Uh, tonight's ending music is brought to you by Super Destroyer. Super Destroyer is a Columbus-based band. 
Uh, it's hard to nail them down specifically with the genre. So just stick around and and, and, and enjoy. So uh, with all that being said, Kyle, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Super Destroyer.